Hi, this is Brian Lazar with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center, and welcome to your weekly Avalanche Outlook. I want to start by showing you a model simulation, a model run of our high-resolution WERF model. And this is showing the snowfall that began on Wednesday morning and mostly through Thursday. Uh, snowfall is going to wrap up for most places by Thursday. We could have a few flurries linger in the south uh, east of the mountains in the Sangre de Cristo range into early Friday morning, but that will cap the end of this uh, very stormy period. Um, we're looking at snow totals ranging anywhere from uh, two feet in the flat tops in the steamboat zone to one foot in the front range zone down through the central mountains. Um, and then the San Juan mountains will gradually also hit a foot of total snowfall accumulation, but that'll be a little bit later, about 12 hours later before they hit those totals. So late on to Thursday. And so here's some avalanches that have run just over the last few days from across the state. And they're really good illustrations of the kinds of avalanches you're going to be able to trigger as we move into Friday and through the weekend. So here's one in West Brush Creek um, out near Crested Butte. You can see a wind drifted slope. It pulled out a slab in the storm snow. Um, here's one in Washington Gulch again out by Crested Butte. This is uh, one that caught a snowshoer and took them for a short ride, fortunately with no major injuries. Um, you can see here our persistent slab problem. So you've got the storm snow sitting on that very weak uh, snow that developed during our dry spell. And you can see how stark that interface is. So those are the kinds of avalanches that are breaking uh, generally around one to two feet deep, a little bit deeper in the very snowiest areas. Um, here's one on Red Mountain Pass. This was a skier triggered avalanche that was triggered from a distance or remotely. And here's a very large avalanche that ran in Capitol Creek, which is up closer to Aspen. And this is a sign of things to come. We can see in these, uh, these areas that have picked up a little bit more snow recently than elsewhere, that the slabs are getting a little bit bigger and a little bit more continuous across the terrain. So this is a size three avalanche. This is big enough to break some timber. Uh, this is the first one we've seen in quite a long time, but we do think it's probably not an outlier. It's just an early indication that avalanches are growing a little bit bigger in size. Um, and these are the kinds of avalanches which are very hard to survive should you get caught up in them. Here's a little bit, a uh, few other photos of this avalanche which ran on Haystack Mountain. And we're seeing these worrisome signs. So Mother Nature is talking to us. She is giving us indications that the snowpack is unstable. We're getting a lot of collapsing and uh, shooting cracks. In this case, the shooting crack in the photo here was triggered from that X. So you're triggering collapses from hundreds of feet away. And this is clear signs that we have very unstable snow. Hey everyone, Dylan here with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'm up here at about 11,300 feet on a northwest facing slope. And I just triggered a nice slope wide collapse and even got the slab to slide a few inches down slope. And this is really showing how sensitive the snowpack is and how easy it is to trigger an avalanche right now on these northerly slopes with just this weak, weak sugar snow buried underneath this firm slab that's over two feet thick in some areas. So when we look at avalanche activity over about the last six or seven days across the state, you can see that uh, nowhere really has been spared. A lot less activity in the steamboat and flat top zone, which tends to have a snowpack uh, right now that can absorb a little bit more loading. But otherwise, we're seeing avalanches from the Front Range through the Central Mountains all the way down into the San Juan Mountains. I do want to point out the uh, avalanche distribution. So this avalanche rose shows you the aspect and elevation where avalanches are occurring. And you can see we do have a little bit of activity on south and west, but most of our avalanche activity is confined to these northerly and easterly facing slopes. And um, these are the same areas which are going to be more dangerous as we move into the weekend and into early next week. So if we back out and take a look at the season as a whole, you can see here that we're approaching 2,000 reported avalanches since the beginning of October. Um, that's kind of on par with most avalanche seasons. It's quite normal for us to have thousands of avalanches recorded by the end of the season. And you can see that very few places in Colorado mountains have been spared from avalanche activity. Um, this has resulted in 56 incidents where people were caught and took rides in avalanches. Uh, that would, accounts for 59 people in those 56 accidents being caught. And unfortunately, uh, there were four tragic fatal outcomes or avalanche fatality so far this season. The number of avalanches is certainly going to go up between now and the avalanche season. We don't want the number of incidents and avalanche uh, fatalities to go up at all. So please 
Remember to check your avalanche forecast at colorado.gov slash avalanche or on the CEIC mobile app before going out. It's going to be a dangerous uh, weekend and early next week, so plan on conservative terrain choices and steering clear of steep slopes, particularly on northerly and easterly facing slopes. And we'll see you here back next week. Thank you.